Hey, what is up, guys? Welcome back. Um, I recently started, you know, playing the, the game Arknight, um, and it's kind of a little bit weird, like, kind of just randomly uploading some content. I probably should have started with, like, you know, introducing the game type of video instead of just getting straight into it. But I actually cleared the last stage of the game, and this isn't just the normal last stage, this is, like, the challenge mode last stage, which basically is, like, the hardest thing you can do in the game currently and I, I actually just cleared it and I recorded the footage and um, I'm just like super super hyped and really wanted to share it and I didn't I know where else to like put it so I decided to like upload it to YouTube and like you know post it in some reddits and discords and stuff because I I was I'm like I don't think many people have cleared this I, I, like there's probably like very very few people that have actually cleared this stage um, at this at this moment so I'm actually going to go through and talk about the strategy I used to clear this if you want to clear it for yourself because there's a lot of like very little details that if you like mess up a tiny bit, it won't work, okay? And I, I probably um, spent like 300 sanity or so failing on this stage. It's very, it was a... Uh, you know, it's definitely not very efficient, but um, I really wanted to clear it. So, as you can see over here, all of my um, units are only Elite 1. They're not, um, they're not Elite 2 yet. And I borrowed a Silver Ash from a, um, from a friend. And when you borrow something from a friend, it, even if theirs is Elite 2, it becomes the highest level of whatever you have so my highest level is a level 60 elite one so therefore the silver ash becomes a level 60 elite one and he doesn't get his third skill he can only use his first skill which is a little bit unfortunate but that's completely fine um, I, I basically just needed another unit that i could just throw in it didn't have to be silver ash it was just like i need another unit to kind of um block the way essentially you'll see in it you'll see what i mean in a bit so in the very beginning, um, for this specific strategy, I think Fang is required. Unless your Vigna is like much higher level than mine. Mine's mine's Elite One level thirty. Maybe if yours is like level sixty, then you can use something that has like because even one cost more could actually potentially cause you to fail. So it's kind of specific. You kind of have to use Fang. My Fang is completely maxed out. Um, skill wise everything like is just completely maxed out level wise skill wise um, rank six as well so you'll see over here your vigna the first detail is your vigna needs to be high enough level to kill this soldier before this second soldier passes her if this uh, second soldier passes her um, before i actually tried it when she was level 20 and it wasn't enough if this second soldier passes her then um, there will be three units and one of them will make it past your your fang and go into here and you will lose because on challenge mode you only have one life and if you don't perfect clear everything it's you know i still actually consider that a fail so um actually as you can see over here she she killed the first one and then you know r right as the second one was, was about to pass her like she clipped it right here now, the second detail is, if you mess this up, you will fail. Um, the second detail is this Shirayuki. As you can see, I ha I actually haven't deployed her yet. I was waiting. I, I already had enough points to deploy my Shirayuki, but um, I still haven't deployed her because I'm waiting for the boss to move. You have to actually wait for the boss to begin moving to the third slot before she doesn't have to be at the thir third slot but she has to start moving from the second slot to the third slot before you deploy your deploy your shirayuki if you do it before um you'll see in a moment she actually hits my shirayuki once the moment i deploy her so she does one one auto attack onto my shirayuki if you deploy her sooner then she will take two auto attacks from the boss instead as you can see that auto attack did half of her health so um, you need to make sure she 
is already moving because once she does that one auto attack, she will start moving. And if you deploy Sharyuki a second too late, then this Vigna's um, basically you need her to kill these two units with her first auto. So then Vigna blocks this one and this one goes through um, and half Fang blocking two and Vigna blocking one. If you don't do this, then one of them is going to slip past and you're going, going to fail essentially. So it's a, a little bit sp specific. And over here um, is the fourth detail um, that you have to watch out for. Um, the healer that I'm using is Mir, and for this kind of like super clutch start, um, I think it has to be Mir, because she has a passive where the moment you deploy her, she heals um, the nearby allies for 413, the amount of her, her attack. Um, and I'm waiting exactly for 14 seconds. And as you can see, my Vigna is actually about to die. She's like pro two hits away from death, or three hits away from death. And I'm waiting for 17 to deploy my, my mirror. I'm going to do it. Um, and as you can see, she healed this little bit. If you're using another healer, you will you would have to deploy her. Vigna might take another auto and then she could die before the healer's heal reaches her. So um, I think for this specific strategy, you have to use Mir for in, in this slot. Thankfully, she's only a four star, so it's not, it's not too difficult. Over here, I, I activate my, my Vigna's passive because as you can see, um, there's three units. She needs to kill this one, block this one before it gets passed. Because um, I think Fang might not be able to kill this one before this one reaches Fang. Um, and over here, I deploy my deploy my um, Coco Dayo. I I have her facing right because um, you'll see in a bit later um, she can actually help deal a little bit of damage to the boss when the boss is walking over on the second row. So right now you have a bit of time to chill. Like just now it was probably like in real time, it was only like, if you were just playing the stage normally in real time, it was only a few seconds. But like in those few seconds, the amount of details that had to be like put into the strategy was, was pretty insane just for you to survive that early phase. So over here you have a little bit of time to chill. Um, Probably the hardest part is over. And over here you can actually like even make a few mistakes and it won't matter. But in the beginning there's like zero room for error. So right now I'm waiting for her to begin walking to the next next block. Um, there's another detail where she does her Frost Nova move over here, as you can see. She's about to do it. She does this move. Now this um, Frost Nova, this specific one is like, it's pure RNG. It could hit any block um, near her, even the one she's standing on. So if, if she, um, basically if you, if the, the Frost Nova hits the block she's standing on, you have to exit the, the stage and retry. It's just bad, bad luck, bad RNG. I had a few fails because of that as well. So she does does her Frost Nova move, and the moment she begins walking, uh, it's safe to put your Melentha down and start fighting. Now, um, the reason why I paused the stage over here is because I wanted to time my heal perfectly, so when after my Melentha takes a hit, um, my healer will begin healing. Now, you don't have to use the specific healer I'm using, um, War Warfarin. You can use any healer over here. Uh, you could probably use like Gaviel or something on in this slot. Um, Warfarin actually isn't the most ideal because she costs 19, but it's perfectly fine. So she's she's taken a hit. I'm putting Warfarin down, and it does a um, an instant heal on her. Or not an instant heal, but um, it, it starts healing her. And um, the next detail is is over here when the this big dude is um, starting to run over. He has a very, very high armor. 
So what you want to do is you want to activate your Shirayuki's um, second skill and her active skill will turn her attack, um, part of her attack into, into magical damage, essentially. So the moment he gets into range, I activate my second skill and I am waiting for 19 um, because that's the cost of my Korra to put down my Korra and begin setting this up. And this is the next de detail over here is that your Vigna actually um, has trouble surviving against this guy. And if you put too much um, healing, because I'm using a single target healer over here, even though Mir um, through her active can heal two at, at the same time. So I'm actually watching her bar to see if she has her active and how long I can keep my Vigna alive. And I'm trying to actually undeploy my Vigna um, before my Fang gets too low or, or um, she won't be able to basically keep both of these alive. And I want my, my Fang to stay alive and I want to undeploy my, my Vigna. So over here, I'm kind of waiting. I'm looking, I'm slowing it down and I'm waiting for looking at his attack animation. So right now she, uh, my mirror got a got her her bar to full. So she did a double heal on both of them. And then over here, I was actually I actually messed up. I was a second too late on on um, undeploying her. I wanted to undeploy her before my my mirror did the did the heal, which um, she did, and I basically wasted one heal. But it's not the end of the world. Um, did it again? I think over here. Yeah, I, I was I was supposed to do it before that, but it it actually was kind of fine because um, this silver ash is level sixty, the one I borrowed, so I was actually able to do enough damage to to kill these two fast enough, pretty kill these three really fast. So right now I'm looking at Melenta. I'm trying to use her active skill. Unfortunately, um, the frost nova hit her over here, so she's dead. But it's fine. Uh, I put down Emiya, facing the facing the left side. Um, Emiya is only over here to do damage to the big big dudes because they're they have very high armor, so it's very hard to do damage to them using just physical damage. That's why I have a magic um, damage dealer over here. So right now, um, that's the first phase of the stage complete. She finished going through the first row she's going to come through here and start walking over for the second row and then if she walks past the third row then that's when you when you fail I actually get her to the third row and it was like very very clutch at the end so over here is the same concept um, when the big guy walks into range Shirayuki uses her active skill and over here, you actually should pop all of the active skills. I kind of popped my Amiya skill a little bit too late, but it's still fine because kind of this this um, this Silver Ash kind of carried me because he was he was higher level. If I was using mine, then I might have had some trouble because mine was like ten levels lower than than this one. So my Fang did die, which is still fine because there's not a lot of units. Um, coming through here. There's only like two at a time coming through here. So um, over here, this is like another detail you have to watch out for because like if you deploy your Melantha too early, this could actually cost you. Um, because if the boss gets into your team too soon before all the other, um, all the, all the other mobs die, then you're going to fail the stage. So over here, I'm waiting for her to use her um, use her AOE skill first, because if I put her put Melantha down before both Melantha and this Warfarin is both gonna get hit by the AOE skill. So because of that, I I waited for her to use her AOE. Um, Warfarin's healing herself, and then I deploy Melantha right now. So she's basically, um, Melantha's just here to buy me more time, buy me some time. So, so, and also do a bit of damage to the boss, um, as much as she can. 
while keeping her away from my team as long as possible. But unfortunately, she does her one-shot move again, and uh, I deployed my my Liskarm, basically like a pure tank, um, elite one level fifty, just to take some hits. She's not receiving any healing from in this slot, which is um, a little bit unfortunate. And she dies immediately, and then I just throw in siege to take. Tank, tank the boss and stall for a, just a tiny bit longer. And then once Siege is down, my Vigna's up again. <laughs> Put Vigna up to stall for a, a little bit. Alright, so they've stalled for um, quite a long time. There's still one more wave of mobs coming. This is the last wave. And if I can stay alive while keeping... Um, if Well, basically stay alive while killing these last few mobs then I can beat the stage. And thankfully they're not like the heavy, the, the really heavy duty guys. They're just like random little mobs. So they die. Um, one detail you actually have to watch out for, like over here, is you have to use a tank that has some sort of active ability that makes them tankier at this um, specific part over here. Because um, my Koro is taking the AoE from the boss, the auto attacks from the boss, plus these two units at the same time. So it's, you know, the, the she's taking a lot of damage right now. So she, she pops her, her active. Um, unfortunately, the boss still does her one shot move. Now over here, in order to for me to um, basically save myself a little bit of deploy time, I waited for her to auto attack and then I undeployed my units instead of letting them die. So you'll see me do this a few times. Um, it's actually, actually attacking Silver Ash. I thought she was going to attack my crows. My Silver Ash HP is still like still able to take two hits. So the boss actually um, dies here but then she enters her phase two and in her phase two she basically goes berserk and does more damage. So she's hitting this Silver Ash pretty hard. I undeploy him because I'm actually, I actually want her to make it past, but I also want to stall for as much time as possible so my other units come back. Now over here, she does the one-shot move to my Crows, which is um, unfortunate, and I also didn't expect her to um, one-shot my Mirror over here <laughs> with just one auto attack. So over here, I timed her auto to undeploy my um, my Shirayuki and then now since I have already have 99 um, deploy points I um, right now I'm just kind of like I pause the game to like think like okay what should be my final strategy to to beat this so I put down Vigna because Vigna was like the lowest cost I put down my um, ex Exusia, Exusia, um, to over here to basically do some damage the moment she walks out, and because I haven't deployed my Exusia before, um, her cost is still at thirteen instead of uh, you know going up higher and higher because it was the first time I deployed her. So I'm, I'm actually watching my um, my deploy points closely right now and trying to stall right now. I'm just stalling until my healers come back because I know what, if my healers come back and I can keep her at like a far range from my healers, um, I can kill her essentially because I could just keep rotating tanks and DPS until she dies. So right now I'm stalling for as long as possible until my healers come back. So I'm waiting for Vigna to, uh, for her to kill Vigna and then I undeploy her right before she does, she gets hit by the one shot move. So I did successfully undeploy Vigna, um, bringing me back to 99 deploy points again. And then I, I um, de deployed Liskarm first, and I didn't think she would, you know, one shot, extra shot from like that far away. That's a little bit unfortunate. Um, I deployed Liskarm first so I could have my deploy points start accumulating. And then I'm waiting for her to, uh, because I know Liskarm can't take another auto, I'm waiting for her to attack animation and then undeploy 
deploy another tank, stall for it. And then right now, um, I know my, um, I, I just tried to pause it there. <laughs> I, I know my Korra is, um, um, Korra is tanky enough to take like, like one or two hits. So I could safely put down Silver Ash to start doing a little bit of damage to them. And I, and I saw my mirror was coming back. So I let my Korra take a hit. I, I deploy mirror, use her passive to heal my Korra a bit. And then she does her one heal. Um, and then right right here, originally I was thinking of putting um, putting my Warfarin over here, but then I knew she would get hit by the AoE, which is kind of a bad idea. So I thought if I put her here, then she can heal these two, and then my Mirror can focus on healing my Korra. And even if my Korra dies, I can just keep um, rotating. I still have three melees I can rotate right now, um, even if my Korra dies. So I put down my Warfarin, start healing, and, you know, Unfortunately, Koro does die. Or Korra does get hit by her, her one-shot mechanic. Um, I'm waiting for her to walk to this slot. So, um, I think this is out of her, her normal AoE range. So then I can put down put down my, my Crows to start doing a bit of damage to her. And Crows is doing quite a bit of damage. She doesn't have very high armor. So that's why physical damage still works pretty well on her. And so Rash is just, you know, tanking it until she gets hit by the one-shot move. She does her AoE, and then I deploy Mel Melintha to buy myself some more time. And that was it. That was how I beat, um, that was how I beat the stage. How I beat challenge mode 410. Alright, hopefully you, uh, you enjoyed the guide of how to do this. I know this kind of strategy required a lot of specific units at spe spe specific like um, deploy point costs. So it might not work for everybody, but um, it's probably something you could use to come up with your own strategy to um, like using your own units, right? And I think this is probably like the bare minimum of a team you can use to clear this. But it was it was very very rough. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.